What was your first original game that you worked on? That was Maniac Mansion. All right. Yeah, you you said the words. Now, <laughs> now I have to play. I it. started up. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a YouTube uh, full playthrough. I, we could turn off the guy's. Uh, yeah, this guy I'll turn off like... the guy's narration. Uh, but this was the this was state of the art graphics adventure uh, back in the day, and this was a horror a horror title. Well, it was a spoof of a horror title. Okay, a spoof. Yeah, and this is also the Nintendo version. This isn't oh, the uh, original Commodore version. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Yeah, um, but this was uh, so. This was uh, early. Would you say early eighties? It came out in nineteen eighty seven. Mid late eighties. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, because we were talking before the show, and I had uh, really gotten engrossed in in text adventures, you know. Uh, Crowther and Wood's original adventure in Colossal Cave, and then Zork came along in the Infocom games, and I play a lot of the played a lot of those, of course. And I mentioned, uh, I thought it'd be really cool to play those again, and they're not that. <laughs> it's too much. It's a lot of work. Or maybe I never, <laughs> I never really got into the text adventures. No, yeah. I played the original adventure in Colossal Cave and stuff on the college mainframe computer, and I dabbled a little bit in Zork, but. Yeah, I think one of the big impetuses for doing Maniac Mansion was the graphics, that I enjoyed adventure games. I enjoyed, you know, that that type of game, but I really wanted graphics and wanted to just be clicking on stuff on the screen and not typing. So a graphics adventure does a very similar thing, but you have a picture in the early days, a rudimentary picture instead of a, a word picture. And then you have commands on the screen. So as you say, you can you can click see the commands here yeah you just have all the words right there on the screen you click on rather than rather than typing them in i mean there's some advantages also, also some disadvantages i mean i think a lot of you know text adventure purists really didn't like the graphic adventures because they didn't feel that they had the same you know freedom right. to be entering information and, and typing stuff but you know i think what i found when i was you know researching maniac mansion was that you know, although you could type in, you know, hundreds of different words to text adventures, it really only understood like 10 or 15 words, right? Everything else was just synonyms. And so that's when I kind of boiled it down to the verbs that you see on the on the Maniac Mansion screen. You you know what you lose? You lose the, the thrill and frustration of typing <laughs> examine box, open box, <laughs> pick up box, throw box trying every possible verb with the box. And and actually, that's the main reason I don't play text adventures anymore. I realize it's a lot of work. It's annoying. So now I might be it's more a lot open. of typing. It's a lot of typing. I might be a little more open to the uh, the idea of a of a graphical adventure. Did Maniac Mansion do was it wasn't the first wasn't uh, was Sierra online around by then doing graphical adventures as well? Yeah, Sierra, Sierra Online was around. Yeah, so they but had, they were still they were still typing, right? Oh, you, they were. You get, oh. Yeah, you get the picture, but you still had to type in the words, um, you know. And you'd have to. I think you could you could move around the screen with the arrow keys, but if you wanted to pick up something, you still typed pick up. So they they were this hybrid between you know text adventures and kind of true point and click adventures. Right. Um. Was you was Make Mansion the first one where you'd point at the commands? You'd click on the commands? Uh, I th I think it probably was. Wow. I mean, there were some games where you did kind of click on stuff, but I think Maniac Mansion was kind of the, the first true point-and-click adventure game, yeah. A success right out of the box? I You know, it kind of did okay. I don't, I don't think any of the stuff we did at Lucasfilm did super well. You know, Sierra was also the... was, was always the leader, you right. know, in that market. Um, when we... Um, translated our games and we brought them over, over to Europe, we did extremely well. We did much better in Europe than we did in the United States. But Maniac Mitchell wasn't a huge hit, you know, when it first came out. It was it was a game that took a while. Interesting. 